education system adequately prepares you into the future if they're not able to do basic day-to-day -day financial tasks. Record high housing prices, record high tuition costs, record high student debt, and so many more issues all have some kind of link to the financial illiteracy of our students and our general population. Government and politicians trying to solve these issues only through policy and complex regulations is simply ignorant. The first step should be to educate the everyday person, and that should be partly done by our education system. Incre increasing student financial literacy offers so many benefits to you as a person. You can be so much more effective at your job, you'll be a lot more educated, be able to vote better, creating a better democracy for everyone. You'll be more ready to embrace business and innovation, and it'll be more beneficial for you and everyone around you. But still, in Canada, only 42% of Canadians have competent financial literacy skills, meaning that 58% are not best equipped to deal with all of the day-to-day -day financial tasks that they have and all the issues that are going on around the world right now. Now, I'm not some prodigy genius that's the first to recognize the issue of financial literacy. Governments around the world, and especially in Europe and North America, have been attempting to solve this issue increasingly now. Many school boards, including ours in many school boards in Europe and North America, including ours in Ontario, Canada, have started introducing financial curriculum mandates in most school curriculums. But studies have shown that these mandates alone are not enough to increase financial to increase financial e literacy rates. For example, how, how, for example, how can teachers be expected to teach financial content from a curriculum, one, that they had no say in, and two, because not all teachers are fully financially literate themselves? Now, it's unfair to generalize. I've met many teachers who are fully financially literate. And if you're one of my teachers, they come the last few sentences. But, um, but, um, sorry. Uh, but if, but if, um, how can teachers be expected to teach financial content but not fully financially literate for themselves? And on top of this, it's not the teachers' as fault well either. Post-secondary schools, including but teaching yeah, colleges, like have no mandates for financial so curriculum. We have most. Which means that they're teaching minimal financial content while encouraging tons of student debt. Now, this issue extends obviously beyond here. Um, and this means that to solve this issue, you need to look beyond simply fixing education curriculum. Finland, known for having the best education system in the entire world, coincidentally also has its youth scoring in the top three for financial literacy worldwide. For financial literacy worldwide. And it's been doing this because it's been trying to solve financial illiteracy since the 1990s, way before other countries thought it was a mainstream issue. And here's how it's been doing it. All schools in Finland, including post-secondary schools, must incorporate financial content with all of their curriculums. But more than curriculum, it's Finland's cultural emphasis on finance through its education system. There are so many more competitions and programs, like the Talus Group, an annual competition where, where students from all across Finland, it, from hundreds or, th or thousands of high schools, compete to be the most educated on economics and finance. And the winner of this competition instantly gets sent to some of Finland's best universities, which encourages people who even aren't interested in finance to participate and try and do well. And that's not the only competition. There are tons more spread throughout Finland and the overall EU. School boards are also incentivized by public grant and, and, and aid funds that are regularly donated to by the government to increase financial literacy in schools. Even in North America, business competitions like FBLA and DECA have become increasingly popular now. But Finland's case is still improving. Have being in the top three most financially literate nation does still mean that nearly half of your population isn't fully financially literate. And places like North America are doing even worse. But Finland is currently the nation that is that is making the greatest strides towards improvement and as models that other nations should be looking after. Now, we've only been talking about the scope of financial literacy in wealthier regions of the world and regions near us, like North America and Europe, but it is now becoming a mainstream global issue. 50 years ago, countries in South America, Africa, and Asia did not have financial literacy as a concern because there weren't many finances in the first place. 
point is, they had much bigger issues. Nowadays, 1.2 billion people have been lifted out of poverty in these regions since 1990, which means that there is a much and ever-growing concern to teach this new middle class basic financial skills. But there are many problems with this, especially for younger generations in the education system. A lot of these countries are authoritative and don't hold many democratic or capitalist values, just nations in the Middle East or in China. These nations, these nations have a history of attempting to keep their population subjugated and to not disrupt public order. Sometimes it's in their interest not to educate their, their finance in areas like uh, their, their population on areas like finance. They don't find out about corruption schemes or other sketchy things going on. On top of this, a lot of these countries only emphasize educational excellence in areas like math and science, and completely ignore and shut out all other areas, including financial education. This kind of negligence is now becoming very, very uh, visible in their financial literacy scores compared to the rest of the world, as you can see here. And OECD states that financial literacy is key to a nation's population success. It allows people to be more educated, more educated on politics, vote better, creating a better democracy. It allows businesses to be more competitive and have more effective employees. It allows tons more innovation to occur. I believe that this entire process with solving financial illiteracy starts with our education system and ends with a financially literate society. If you'd like to become more financially literate yourself, I highly recommend visiting government and bank websites. Canada.ca using the search tool for financial literacy programs gives you tons of online and physical workshops to look at. And just be smart about information on the internet to verify the parents and adults. And all the books listed here are also amazing resources. Thank you.